have to beg uh, for the call for peace drum dance to, to, to uh, come here today. And uh, if I had known what we were in for, I would have begged. <laughs> but they heard about the Democracy Convention, and they contacted us very early on. And I'm so very pleased, so happy that you began this gathering of people from around the country who in many cases have not met each other before with this call for peace, this call for unity. That is exactly what we need if we're going to succeed in this movement, isn't it? Thank you. My name is Ben Mansky. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Liberty Tree Foundation. And uh, I have a little bit of a uh, And before we get started with the rest of our program tonight, I would like to ask Dotsa Zeps to please come back up here. Is Dotsa here? Little hidden objects here. That's kind. On the mayor's feet. Uh, Dotsa, this is not nearly uh, enough appreciation. Uh, it doesn't express the appreciation that I feel uh, for all the work that you've done uh, in the convention. Uh, you know, Dotsa works uh, not only as an event planner, but also as uh, organizing staff for Progressive Dane, a local political party. Uh, like me, she's a uh, veteran of Madison's West Side. If there's anybody who is a West High School grad here in the house. West Side Pride. Dotsa, thank you so much. Uh, please.
Capitol with us as we fought to, as the call for peace troop reminded us, to move forward and not backwards. Please welcome a person, not just an icon, Mayor Paul Soglin.
whether it was the Erie Canal, whether it was the opening of the West with the railroads, whether it was the interstate highway system, which was part of the National Defense Act, or it was the GI Bill. If we look internationally after World War II, what two nations had the strongest economies? The two nations that took the largest part of the gross national product and put it into education and infrastructure. The best thing that happened to Germany and Japan was to lose the war, for us to force them to shed a standing army. And they didn't know what to do with their money. Actually, they did. They put it into education, they put it into infrastructure. When you look historically at the United States, and, and, and there is nothing better than the two examples that I just cited, the National Defense Act and the uh, GI Bill. We see this unprecedented growth in our own economy. When I'm teaching the public budgeting class for graduate students at the University of Wisconsin, I remind them that after the county highway comes the interstate. And when the interstate highway comes in, you find yourself with an interchange. The next thing you know, you've got a cracker barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and then comes the mobile gas station. And then comes the strip shopping mall. And eventually comes Macy's, uh, Lord and Taylor, and the rest of them. Why our governor doesn't understand that is beyond me. Now maybe he's drawn, drawn, he's drawn a different line in the sand and with some of us who are saying, well, yes, we want to grow businesses, but those aren't the ones we want to grow. Uh, but the point is, we've learned through history several things. The first of which, to repeat it, investment in infrastructure, investment in human capacity is what grows a society. The second thing, is we have to forever remain vigilant and, and, and we cannot rest and assume that others are going to take care of our society. Now, let's go back to those couple of months here in Madison, the capital. I just want to recount something. It's a message I would like to share with the government. Madison, Wisconsin is one of those special places that when 100,000 people show up for a parade, whereas in most societies, in most communities, you would have 99,000 watching and 1,000 parading. In Madison, it's 99,000 marching, and you're lucky if you get a couple of dozen before you be observing. We were in the middle of the mayoral race, and I quickly figured out that while it was fun at times to be in the parade and to march around, the better thing to do was to stand on the curb all alone and wave to 100 dollars. <laughs> it gave me a wonderful opportunity to meet the folks that had come down to petition their government. Within 15 minutes, Two women came up. One said I was a student at Edgewood College in 1967, and we were in the National Student Association together. Another woman, 15 minutes later, says I'm from La Crosse. In 1968, I was a student at Edgewood College. We were in the National Student Association together. Now, this went on week after week, day after day, hour after hour. People from Ashland, from Sturgeon Bay, from Green County, from Green Lake County, obviously the city of Milwaukee, constantly saying, I'm here. Some very apologetic. One woman said she hadn't voted in over 30 years. This was her way of uh, doing penance. <laughs> there were the electrical engineers who showed up from Chicago. There were some teamsters. Uh, that came in from, from Ohio. 
there were members of uh, my daughter's union, the Screen Actors Guild, who came in from Los Angeles. There were some agitators from New York. <laughs> All together on those 100,000 day weekends, they didn't amount to more than, than, than 500,000 of the, the folks. Governor Walker, those were your people out there. That was we, we are grateful for all of the out-of-state educators. But the point is, this is about Wisconsin, and the thing that that I found most offensive about what happened during this period is that we constantly heard the mantra that Wisconsin public employees, Wisconsin public employees have the highest health insurance and the highest retirement benefits in the United States. And you want to know something? It's true. But what wasn't said was their salaries were among the lowest. And that the cost of these public employees was among the lowest in the United States. And that, in fact, if you look at the Census Bureau data, about the 10 to 12 states that have the lowest per capita cost of employees who are members, excuse me, who have the cost of employees in the public sector, among those states are Illinois, Pennsylvania, California, Wisconsin, states with strong public employee unions. The people of those states are getting a bargain. Mm -hmm. They are getting quality. They are getting fewer public employees doing more and better work. And we cannot let that go unanswered. That has to be repeated over and over and over again. And that is how we welcome you to our state. One final word. <laughs> Tom and I, our, our paths have crossed many times over the years. We've been to so many conferences, uh, so many different events. One of the most significant times that we met was in 1968. It was a few days, I won't tell you what days it was. It was in Manhattan, Kansas. Tom was on his way from the West. You were coming from the West Coast, right, Tom? No, I thought I was coming from Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on his way to Chicago. And you know why he was going to Chicago. Yeah. And so he was there uh, speaking to those of us who were convening at the National Student Association that year, uh, urging us to come to Chicago. Now, some of you may recall that in subsequent months, Tom got charged with all kinds of conspiracy uh, events. He uh, faced some very serious charges, along with uh, a good deal of other very respectable pirates and scoundrels. <laughs> and Part of the charges were stemmed on, I guess, crossing interstate lines, right? Tom, it's a good thing they didn't call me to testify. <laughs> Tom was energetic. He was moving. He was inspirational. And when they brought up that trial and made accusations about Tom and, and what he had done, they really brought the wrong charges. He should have been charged with inspiring the youth. Wow. That is what he was guilty of. And he's been doing it ever since. And as I look at those of you who gather here today, he's still inspiring the youth, every one of you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Have a great day.
three. Uh, Tom Hayden was asking me about sort of the commonalities of our keynote speakers tonight. And having met uh, Sherry Honkala uh, maybe 15 years ago at an event uh, somewhat like this, uh, it was a little bit earlier than the stages of the development of this movement, I can tell you that one commonality that I see is that uh, we have uh, a lot of conspirators up here, some dangerous people. Uh -oh. <laughs> And, uh, and thankfully, they're on our side. Um, you'll be hearing from me quite a bit over the next couple of days, so I will just say this. Uh, this movement is a movement for power. It's not a movement for a greater share of the pie. We want the whole pie. We want the whole pie. This movement has taken some time to build. It has been built deliberately by many people, many of you in this room, over time. There were some of us, and some of you, and some other people who wish they could be here, who were involved, uh, I would say, in the genesis, maybe the, the conception of the movement, in the lead up to the protests in Seattle. That's right. And then for me, I see those protests in Seattle, and I'm guessing there's some veterans of that victory over corporate capital who are here today. I see those protests in Seattle as the birth of this movement. And that young child uh, had some difficult first steps. There was this little election the following year that became a Supreme Court decision. And then again in 2004, we once again had a fight over the right to vote with the Supreme Court saying, no, you have no constitutional right to vote in 2000, and then we had to fight again in 2004. And this moment right now, for me, is the moment in which this movement for democracy in the United States has reached maturity. We have become visible. We are proof that there is a movement that is calling for radical democratic reforms in this country so that it is the American people, the people, of the of the people who wish us well around the world, can be reflected in policy that all the things we know that we need to do, raise taxes on the rich, two-thirds of the American people know that's what we need to do, can actually come to pass. So for me personally, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this movement happen, for your commitment in coming here, for the work that you're going to do in the coming weeks and months, and especially actually in the next couple of days. There will be announcements at every session. Please pay attention to those. <laughs> if you can help out, uh, please do. And now I'm just, as I said, I, I, I'm talking plenty over the next couple days, and I'll tell you I haven't slept much. <laughs> I think I've slept since Sunday. Um, I'd like to introduce another person 